trap. Yeah. Do you ever think about the future? All the time. How about you? Yeah. Next. Everybody's favorite Aussie, funny man, Mr. David Strassman. Hey, Chucky, look at all these lovely Australian folk. They're all our mates, Cobber. I hate it here. Why aren't we back in the States, you asshole? Now, Chucky, that's not a very nice thing to say. We love it here. Pig shit. You were just saying backstage how much you thought this place was a real shithole. And how we're only here because you can't get a television show back home. Hey, Chucky, that's not true. I asked, Strassman, you big tool. You were driving cabs and I was selling my wooden butt on the street to make ends meet. Look, Chucky, the good people here at Channel 9 are letting us do this show as long as it's family oriented. You're an ass licker, Strassman. <laughs> and Channel 9 can go f themselves. <laughs> I gotta share a dressing room with Frank and Holden. It's hard to work out who's more wooden. <laughs> now, now, Chucky. Hey, screw you, Channel 9. If you want another puppet on air, why didn't you exhume the body of Ozzy Ostrich? What am I talking about? You've already got a puppet on stage. His name's Ray Martin. I wonder whose hand's up his ass. <laughs> okay, Chucky. Now stay tuned, you bronzed Aussies, because we've got a great show for you. After the break, we'll be back with one of the top Aussie stars of stage, screen, and print. The beautiful, the fantastic, the sensational Colette Mann. Who the hell is she? <clears throat> See you after the break. And hey, chuck a Barbie on the shrimp for me, Aussies. <laughs> Come on! I can't, mate. Sorry. <laughs> Paul, those little castles that you sometimes see at the bottom of fishbowls, do they have a moat? Trap? Yeah. Do you ever think about the future? All the time. I think about population control, the breakdown of natural resources, a worldwide chemical war, and the rise of Satanism. And on the 14th day of the year 2020, a season of hate will destabilize all sanity as madness rules the earth, and global destruction is inevitable. Yeah. Man, what are they putting this shit these days? Yeah, right. Ah, hello, Dr. Schnoodl here. You know, a patient of mine came in the other day and said he keeps hearing voices telling him to kill and kill again. I said, what's the problem? You work in an abattoir. <laughs> Greyhound Lures, another great new job creation scheme from Centrelink. The rivalry between Sydney and Melbourne is very similar to the rivalry between Tracy Curo and myself. Because like Sydney, I'm glamorous and beautiful. And like Melbourne, Tracy is just plain, well, flat. <laughs> And when it comes to casinos, the rivalry is stronger than ever. Earlier today, I recorded this interview with Victorian Premier Jeff Kennett and New South Wales Premier Bob Carr. <laughs> Gentlemen, which is the better casino? Well, Crown's obviously the better casino. 
It's a very Victorian casino. That explains the gas explosions every hour. Put a sock in it, Mardi Gras boy. <laughs> Crumb Casino has had some difficulties in the past. They've lost millions of dollars. Oh, fair go, Liz. Anyone could lose things. Behind the fridge, down the back of the couch. I lost my wife for a few months. Found her again, dusted her off, got us new. Well, Crown has also been fined for letting in underage gamblers. Yeah, well, kids often look like adults, Liz. Just ask Michael Jackson. <laughs> well, aren't you concerned about underage gambling? Of course I am, Liz. Kids shouldn't be going to casinos to waste their time. That's what Centrelink's for. <laughs> Mr Carr, is the Sydney Casino making more money than the Melbourne Casino? The Rudy Hill Leagues Club's making more money than the Crown Casino, Liz. Well, are Sydney people bigger gamblers? Mm, yes. Yes, they gamble each time they drink the water. <laughs> Sydney Siders want a casino that's uh, smart and stylish, Liz. Uh, but didn't a customer die there recently? Yes, but in a very smart and stylish way. <laughs> In Victoria, people don't die at our casino. We let them go home and do it themselves. Uh, gentlemen, in conclusion, why do cities need casinos? Well, Liz, because a casino gives a city a certain glamorous, sexy... Sophisticated international image. And the first city in Australia to have a casino was... Hobart. Hobart. <laughs> Thank you for joining us and good night. back and you'll all be glad to know that Chucky has settled down a bit yes I have but if Ray Martin's watching I got nicer hair than you have you asshole <laughs> it's now my great pleasure to introduce a true showbiz legend if you're over 35 you'll remember her from prisoner and if you're not you won't know who she is please give a big Aussie copper gunda guy welcome to Colette Mann <laughs> Here. Oh. <laughs> Who the hell is this? <laughs> you told me we were interviewing celebrities. Then you bring me this nobody who looks like she could work in a canteen. <laughs> Chucky, where are your manners? Oh, Chucky, you devil. I used to be on Prisoner and I did a show with Greg Evans. <laughs> He's probably our next freaking guest. Now, I'm sorry, Colette, you're just gonna have to ignore this little fellow. He's being very un-Australian. <laughs> That's because I'm a Yank, like you. Well, I'd like to ignore him, David, but isn't he just you? I mean, isn't Chucky just you with a funny voice? <laughs> you mean I'm not real? Am I real? Of course you are, David. Just take your hand out of the back of that doll and try and speak to me, one on one, as human beings. Uh, 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 uh. Don't do it, Dave! Don't do it! Uh, 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 uh. There, isn't that better? What am I doing with my life? I'm 40 and I'm making a living with my hand up a puppet's asshole! Oh, there, there, David. We all love you here in Australia. You do? Yeah, of course we do, don't we, everybody? Yeah! Well, screw you, assholes! We don't need you! Chucky, you're back! Mwah. Yeah, and I'm bargained if I'm gonna go back to selling my wooden butt. So stick around, you grouse Sheilas and blokes. We'll be back with more Aussie Kookaburra Cack Fests after this. <laughs> Trav? Yeah? Do you ever think about the future? All the time. How about you? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. God, no. Hey, look at 
David, what do you reckon he's doing? I think he's making a dirty phone call to his girlfriend. <laughs> Sex on the phone, as if that's ever going to catch on. <laughs> Back in the 80s. Welcome to the story of art. In all the annals of art, nothing reflects man's relationship with nature more than the landscape paintings. See here how these two hills rise up like two enormous breasts, reaching for the sky, calling out, squeeze me, rubble me like jelly, thrust your face between my thunderous peaks and go, Bloody, bloody, bloody! Dirty little tart! Hi, I'm Nadeline Brulia. And I'm Trina Arena. And you're, you're watching, watching Video Hits. Hits. And next up is my smash hit single. Only hit single. Well, at least I won all these arias. At least I got a decent pair of tits. Well, at least I went out with Lenny Kravitz and, you know, that guy from Friends. You are such a bitch! I cleaned up at the Arias Everyone told me what a great big star I was But you know I couldn't give a toss I couldn't change my expression if I tried Face the wind changed, now I'm left with eyes this wide Make me look like I'm gonna cry There's nothing left for me to win Think that I could afford to grin I'm so f***ing bored I am unimpressed I look like a stunt trout But I am harassed by the media horde Steve and Vic, as they bring you up to date. Thank you, Rat Snacker. Okay, welcome to up to date news for today. Stick up your ass, etc., etc., etc. Hey, 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 slow down, little fella. You're getting ahead of yourself. Oh, you dirty bugger, man. I'll have none of that filth on the show tonight because I've got a special announcement. You're finally getting rid of that shit haircut. <laughs> Mate, this haircut is a statement about who I am. Yeah, it says, look at me. I'm a stupid bugger, man. <laughs> I know. You're getting your manhood enlarged. No, mate, even better. I'm tying the knot. Hey? Mate, I'm waxing the gorilla. I'm strapping a rocket to me fundamental, you know, putting the old golly walk on ice. What? Steve, I am getting married. We are. No, not us. Me and Brenda, you know, the tabletop dancer. Oh, that's great, mate. I'm really happy for you, mate. And to think. This is all the thanks I get after all I've done for you. Oh, but, mate... Don't touch me, you little bloody hussy man. I wanted you to be my best man. Don't you even think about it. Who looked after you, mate? Who wiped your little nose when it was running? Who rubbed your little tummy when it was sore? <laughs> when you fell over and skinned your little bottom, who was it that kissed it better? You did, steve -O. That's right. And you just use me like a plaything and toss me aside. That's because I can't have your children, isn't it? <laughs> That's because I'm barren. Can I help it if the almighty bugger man of God bestowed upon me that I could not bear the fruits of your loins? <laughs> Is that my fault, Mickey? Is that what you're punishing me for? Well, I deserve it, mate. Punish me. Hurt me. 
Whip me. Beat me. <laughs> Lick me. Oh. But don't leave me, mate. <laughs> oh, you know, that's a real pity, cos I'm putting on a couple of kegs and a few strippers at the reception. No worries on there. <laughs> Marriage, a great thing? Or just a thing that grates? See, us. See you when your wedding rings! Good evening, I'm Ian Goodings. And I'm... Yana Vent. Welcoming you to the Late Night Nerd. And Yana, what's that I smell? <laughs> Why, Ian, thank you. Did you step in something? <laughs> but folks, the nerds. Well, a couple with a termite problem eaten out of house and home. <laughs> Police say a man bashed on the head on a Sydney beach in shell shock. A four foot ten inch tall prostitute accused of selling herself short. <laughs> A QC leaves an alcoholic rehabilitation program sober as a judge. And a man found in a compromising position with a policeman in a public toilet was charged with taking the law into his own hands. <laughs> Probably just exercising the long arm of the law. <laughs> we'll be back with more Late Nerds after mix. Got a boogie hanging out of your nose, sir? Do you, do you want a tissue or something? Thanks, mate. It's all right. Now, Paul, why are funerals always held at such short notice? It's Teddy Bear. Hey, Dave. <laughs> Why is Chuck sitting over there in the chair? Don't you got two hands? No, he's over there because he's been a very naughty boy, Teddy. I think he's dead, Dave. <laughs> His mouth ain't moving, and he's all slumped over. <laughs> I think you killed him, Dave. No, it's part of the act, you simpleton. Yeah, you retarded piece of furry crap. You're just jealous, because Dave takes me to bed. Shut up, Teddy. We're on television. I'm sick of taking your crap, Strassman. This is it. I'm walking. But, Chucky, you can't do anything. You're wood. You're a puppet. I'll tell that to Channel 9. They just offered me the gig hosting the new IMT. Yeah, Dave. And I'm the new Julia Morris. <laughs> Listen to this. And in showbiz news, David Strassman, what a bag of shit. <laughs> well, you can laugh all you like, but you'll never leave over my dead body. You're on, fist boy. He must die. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God.
Sorry, Mr. Kirkle, but we're going to have to let you go. Thank you. Is your life being taken over by housework? Then why not let God do all the work for you? Put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and leave grime to God. The power of prayer can remove even the toughest household stains. But when the prayers don't work, you need the Reverend Father Friar Chitlin's Pray and Wipe to remove all that dirty, rotten, stinking scum from your soul and your toilet bowl. All the goodness of holy water in a convenient spray bottle. Father Friar Chitlin's Pray and Wipe is a registered trademark. Warning, do not use in the home. Here in Gullible Teen Magazine, the Kate Winslet's bum is now so big you can see it from space. <laughs> oh no! Leonardo DiCaprio is pregnant! That's nice. And he's about to invade Iraq. <laughs> Penny, you are not listening to a single word that I'm saying. What are you doing? I am brushing up on my quantum physics. Oh, cool! Why? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked that question, my dear Jennifer, because we are about to embark on an incredible journey. <gasps> are we going to the reject shop again? <laughs> Not unless the reject shop is on the Titanic. What are you talking about? Have you been drinking nail polish again? <laughs> yes. Behold. Your wardrobe. It's not just any wardrobe, it's my time wardrobe. I plan to go back in time to the Titanic to save Leo from his icy fate. <laughs> can we do that? Yeah, if we get to the Titanic before it hits the iceberg, we can. Well, maybe we should get to him before he does that stupid Irish dancing. Yeah, yeah. or before he first sets eyes on fat-ass Winslet. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a moment to lose! Wait! I haven't tested it yet. Where are you going? Into the future. <gasps> Am I in the future? Oh, yes! <laughs> Great. Now, let's go back to the past. We're coming, Leo! Who is it? Darling, are you coming back to the table? The guests are wondering where you both are. Look, we won't be a minute, Simon. We're just finishing up in here. All right, but dessert's on the table. <laughs> Hang on, me! I will save you! <laughs> Looking for that special tool? Then come on down to Tools Galore. Because at Tools Galore, we've got Tools Galore. Uh, I need any ratchet, please. That is not a ratchet. It is a wrench, stupid. The same diff. No, it is not the same diff, der brain. A wrench is an entirely different instrument. Although, yes, it can be used for the same application. Hey, look at me. I'm from the Vice Squad. <laughs> tool. Yes, at Tools Galore, every member of our staff is a complete tool. From the guy in the car park who pushes the trolleys into the side of your car, tool, to the dork at the counter who gives you a 20-minute lecture on the history of the Phillips head screwdriver, tool, to the jerks on the shop floor who spend all their time trying to impress the female customers, all our staff are 100% fully guaranteed tools. Tools. Tools galore is full of tools. Tools galore, we're all tools. If you're looking for a tool, let's come to Tools galore. Oh. Oh. Jeez, it's amazing how them flyboys mount up, don't they? It only took me 7,537 cans of baked beans to get this ticket. <laughs> Mind you, after all them beans, I could have flown myself, really. I... <laughs> oh, I love flying. Oh, I love planes, you know. And the food, oh, the food is so nice. It's like Sizzler up in the air, you know. 
And if you don't like the food, they've got them little bags, you know, so you can cleanse your system into them, if you know what I mean. Wish they had those at Sizzler. <laughs> I'm sorry, I get a bit emotional when I fly. It's because I keep thinking of that Qantas ad, you know, where all the kids are singing. I've been to pokies what never closed down. <laughs> From Broad Meadows to Newtown to the casino called Crown. <laughs> but no matter how far or how wide I roam, I can never get a bloody jackpot and it shits me. <laughs> Sick and tired of spending hours in a video store trying to decide what movie you're going to hire? Then come on down to Easy Choice Video. At Easy Choice Video, the choice is easy because we've only got one video. <laughs> easy Choice Video, we take the choice out of choosing. Yes, look, I've seen it. here with important information for passengers of French Air. As you board your plane, a flight attendant will direct you to your seat in first class, business class, or economy class. <laughs> Unless, of course, you are Australian, in which case you will have no class. <laughs> your flight attendant's attitude might appear to say, I don't give a shit about your comfort on this flight. To me, you don't even exist. <laughs> don't worry, that's just French for welcome aboard. <sighs> also, please don't bother pressing the little come and help me button on the armrest because it is not connected to anything. <laughs> Why should we care about you all the time? All you ever want is pillows and coffee and lunch. Do you ever even think about us? Huh? About our desires, our wants, our needs? Oh, we smile and we laugh and we pretend to like you. When really, we spend the whole flight dreaming of lying back naked in the steamy, sensual embrace of our lover. <laughs> And then I go back to Paris and find that the bastard has run away with that slut from Luxembourg. <laughs> he was gone before I got home. I didn't even get to show him where the exits were. So, have some compassion for your French flight attendants who spend all their time flirting with each other and any other French-speaking passenger. We're just trying to get lucky. So, go to sleep, shut up, and give us some privacy. This is Sophie, signing off. From French Air. Oh, I'm 36, 24, 36 and available. Merci. Bim, bim, bim. Right, so now you've just gone through a red light back there. Where did you actually get your license? At the bottom of a cereal box? <laughs> uh, hello. It's Bert Hansen here. You know, I've been feeling a little bit unwell lately. Only this morning I went to the doctors to get my results. I said, do you think what I've got is serious, doctor? He said, I'll just go to reception and check your results. He rang back 15 minutes later on his mobile phone and told me to leave $50 in a jar of methylated spirits on his desk and try to enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that con the fruiter is hilarious. Yeah, people will never get sick of him. <laughs> Back in the 80s. <laughs> to some, he's a cool breeze on a warm summer's day, the wind beneath their wings. But to us, he's a bag of hot hair with very smelly armpits. <laughs> He's clenched tightly with his pathetically misinformed diatribe. Thank yous, Ian and Janana. <laughs> Greetings, Earthlings. Alien life forms, inventions of desperate minds searching the skies for answers they can't find here on Earth, or just intergalactic deviants who cruise the far reaches of the galaxy looking to pick up, slash, abduct drunken cowboys and stoned line dancers in order to probe them for information on Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> I'm clenched tightly. 
and this is a logical conclusion. There's no denying the universe is very big, but scientists are divided over whether it contains any forms of intelligent life other than me. Cleanse tightly. <laughs> Statistics indicate you've got as much chance of finding extraterrestrial life in the universe as you have of finding any of those little yellow urinal cakes in a nunnery. <laughs> and, yet, and yet, people say that there are aliens among us. I say, why would they be? What has Earth got that Mars hasn't? Besides water, a breathable atmosphere, electronic bucking bulls and barbers who can make you look like Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> And what of those ridiculous tales of alien abductions? Why would super intelligent space creatures waste their time performing cruel and unnecessary experiments on line dancers and cowboys when they could be using their advanced technology to get free games on the Playboy pinball machine? <laughs> I say there are no aliens. I say it's all part of an international conspiracy invented by the UN and propagated by the pixies at the bottom of the garden and the mole men who live underground with Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> they want us to believe, but we will not. Furthermore, if there is alien life out there, I defy them to abduct me right now. Come on, you intergalactic bully boys. Show us what you're made of. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Nanu, nanu. <laughs> yes, well, you can't say he didn't have it coming. Finally, he'll get the probing he truly deserves. <laughs> Good night. Over there. Mm. Want a cheese and pickle? Okay. Jesus, whip! <laughs> Sorry, mate. Burger? Yeah, tap. <laughs> I spy with my little eyes something beginning with P. Police car? No. Spark plug? No. Pedestrians? No. Peering wheel? Don't be stupid. Give up? Yeah. Pizza! Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is on the run. Thanks, oh. mate. Oh, beauty. Right, this now, man. Let's go. It takes more than a few brush strokes on a canvas to evoke the feelings of the rambling, rolling countryside. One must capture the mood of nature while investing the canvas with a little bit of one's own nature. I call it simply Fields of Dreams, because lately I've been dreaming of huge purple mushrooms every night. Strange, really. Ah, oh, hello, Dr. Schnudel here. You know, a patient came to me with a terrible fear of death. After 14 hours of psychological tests, he was still no better. So I had to put him down. <laughs> Tell me, if 
Switzerland is neutral. Why do they have the world's most famous army knife? from French Air, just to say that we've still got the nuclear bomb and we can blow up your country whenever we want. <gasps> Merci. Bim, bim, bim. Bye. Oh, hello, little man. You're back. <laughs> ah, wait, you can step up onto the box. Thank you. <laughs> Look, uh, I was just wondering, do you serve alcohol on French Air? Uh, no. No, no, I don't serve alcohol on French Air because French Air has taken me off their aeroplanes. They have flushed me down into the sewerage pit of a nation to deal with pissheads such as yourself <laughs> who fly all the way to France and then when they get there, drink beer. <laughs> I was fired because I had one little mid-flight champagne. Huh? I didn't neglect my duties, I drank that bottle as quickly as I could and I went straight back to the passengers. But when passengers are being that rude to me, it is my French right to spill coffee on whoever I should choose. But how was I to know he was the president of France? Huh? And then he says to me, oh, but mademoiselle, you seem to have a problem with alcohol. I am French! Huh? The French are lovers, huh? Lovers of fine wine. Mm -hmm. Fromage? Yeah, thanks. But no, apparently I alone am an alcoholic. So to deal with this alcoholism, they send me here to deal with people like you who come and ask me, do you serve alcohol? Well, of course, we serve alcohol. <laughs> voilà. Bon voyage. In today's world, it's important for hair to look and feel its best. That's why we here at the Belgium Vitamin Institute have developed a revolutionary new hair care product that restores your hair's natural vitality and life by unleashing the amazing power of cliches. We've utilized soothing music and images of nature and combined them with sensual images of a model. Then we add the revolutionary concept of slow motion and show you a series of meaningless words. Here's how cliches work. We take a perfectly ordinary shampoo, add vitamins, iron, and the goodness of bran. Then we show you a three-dimensional computer graphic to distract you while we use some more meaningless pseudo-scientific words. At the Belgian Institute, we use only the rarest, most obscure ingredients to give your hair the edge it needs. Ingredients such as Valhalla, Borgnine, and the secret Amazonian herb, Laura Dern. But don't take our word for it. Take a look at these slow-motion close-ups of women with beautiful hair. Clichés. Does your shampoo have enough of them? Hi, and welcome to Money. You know, over the past few weeks, quite a few of you have expressed interest in bonds. Now, personally, I feel bonds are a bit risky, as they often tend to end up in jail. <laughs> now, I thought tonight we'd take a look at the stock market. First, you need a broker. That's a person who has less money than you, but still likes to gamble. The broker needs to know the market and the terminology. For example, the market can be bullish, which means excitable and risky. Or it can be bearish, which means cautious and conservative. And occasionally, it can be monkeyish, which means the stockbrokers throw shit at each other and touch themselves. But that usually only happens after Friday night drinks. Mr. Prime Minister, I've got one for you. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I go stiffy. <laughs> it takes ages to go away and that. What's the story there? <laughs> 
I, I have often asked myself the same question. <laughs> oh, it's leading. How delightful. Hmm, smells like spig rain. Two, perfect opportunity for a nice glass of red. <laughs> and voila! Don't touch me. Don't touch me, they say. But that's OK, little fella. That's what your mates are for. <laughs> Don't leave me now, mate. Oh, I'm sitting, I'm sitting on your f***ing knee. This f***ing dick's coming on. I can only have Good day, Dale. I am Trudy, leader of the warrior transvestites of King's Cross. Now, we worship the goddess... Oh, fuck it. <laughs> From breaking a fingernail to not being able to. Right now. Where are <laughs> From breaking a fingernail to not being able to sustain it. Why is everyone shaking their head? Did I miss the spot or something? Oh, God. You can't give my parents canned soup. I just. I slipped on the carrot, eh? I'm gonna hurt my ankle. From breaking a fingernail to. Take 10. 50% off, yes, 50% off. Why so cheap? Because it seconds me. Why buy brand new cuts of meat at full price when you can get second hand cuts at in an age where the average Hollywood celebrity can't even climb into a flower pot without being photographed, many of the community are crying out for this end a little bit Yeah, because we're not like animals. Like, we, we can't shag just when we feel like it. And so it's fun, 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 so it's fun. Oh, I can't read what the thing says. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we'll be back with the Late Night Bulletin tomorrow night. <laughs> oh, sorry. And then good night. <laughs> Bon appétit! <laughs>